This is The War of the World's Survival, a game that I believe is no longer available. I recorded this footage over two years ago in early 2021, and at some point after that I believe the game got taken down, though I don't know why. I think the account that hosted it was deleted for some reason. But when it was up, I played it intending to upload a full playthrough, yet I just never got around to it. But when I was making my recent video about the Kahaya tripods, I dug up the old footage I'd recorded of this game and figured, well I might as well finally review it at least. A game by Stefano Cagnani, it definitely makes a strong first impression, starting off with an intro that's very cinematic, and in my opinion done very nicely. It genuinely looks like the start of a film or something, and actually it does use the narration by Morgan Freeman from the 2005 Tom Cruise film, followed by the logo of the 1953 version rising up with this really ominous red lighting. It works really well I think. Then we're dropped into the game itself, where we're controlling a horse, pulling a covered wagon, entering a very quaint English village, while our character's thoughts are conveyed to us in text at the bottom of the screen. However, things go awry for this character almost immediately, as he notices what he believes to be a meteor crashing down from the sky. Naturally, he wants to have a closer look, as indicated by the very helpful eye indicator. So our main character, who is called Christopher in this game by the way, manages to make his way, despite my dodgy driving, to what surprisingly it turns out to be a cylinder, and the game automatically takes you out of the vehicle at this point so you can take a closer look. Here he meets an unnamed guy, presumably Ogilvy, who's like the smartest guy ever, because he just instantly works out that we're being invaded by Mars. The screen fades to black for a moment, and when it fades back out again, Ogilvy's seemingly come down with an awful headache. Christopher couldn't care less though, and decides to find his friend Weaver, to show him the cylinder, because he thinks he'd find it pretty cool. Unfortunately, or fortunately, as far as I'm aware, you can't control the horse and wagon anymore. I did try, but it doesn't seem to let you go into it again, and you have to leave it here. Which I remember thinking was a shame, that it wasn't more like GTA Martians or something. That didn't stop me from having some fun with it though. Anyway, so eventually I set on my way to find Weaver. However, it's at this moment that one of the most annoying things about this game became apparent. Christopher is a really unfit fellow and can only run for around 6 seconds before having to stop and rest for a little under 4 seconds while your stamina bar refills, which is something I find incredibly relatable, but in this game it can be quite tedious that you have to continuously slow down and manage your stamina, walking every so often instead of running and all that. Of course these are quite common game mechanics, but in this game I'd say it doesn't really serve much of a purpose as it is. It's just an unnecessary hindrance as far as I could make out. But regardless, eventually once I caught my breath, I got to the house where I discover a letter to Christopher from Weaver, basically just saying that he's in London and we're all in danger. Then Christopher hears a noise coming from the cylinder, sees more meteors, sees a tripod and decides to find Weaver. As you can probably tell, the game has so far moved relatively quickly through the story, which is quite good, it's trying to get straight to the point and get straight to the proper gameplay. But it's at this point that the game begins moving, in my opinion, very slowly, and I don't know if that's due to the game actually moving slowly, or if it's just due to the lack of clarity on what you're supposed to do. The reason I mentioned that you followed an indicator to the objective earlier is because at this point the game stops doing that for some reason, and you're genuinely, as far as I can tell, just left wandering about with absolutely no indication of what to do or where to go. There was text I just noticed saying about maybe I should go back to the cylinder, and it seems I didn't do that here, as there was a tripod in that direction so naturally I went away from it, but I did notice in other playthroughs of it I did return to the cylinder and nothing happened. So I just wandered about for a bit, looking at the tripod from a distance, until suddenly, while I was following this woman around for some reason, I realised that my hunger meter had depleted. So if you've ever wondered what it looks like to die from starvation, here you go. Blood everywhere, splattered on the screen. 
This was quite a surprise, bearing in mind that there had been no mention of the hunger system in the game up to that point, I believe. I mean, obviously, it was clearly there from the beginning, and a game is literally called The War of the World Survival, which inherently suggests a hunger system, but I mean, it gave you no indication at this point of what to do to satiate your hunger, or where to find food, or that kind of thing. But I guess I'm pretty bad to have died at this stage when you're clearly not meant to. So the game faded to black and faded out to this. Yeah, if you die, you have to do all the beginning bit again, which felt was a bit unnecessary considering its purpose is just to, you know, get you to the proper gameplay. I felt this would have been a perfect place to have a checkpoint or something. But either way, I set on my way and I instantly collided and got my wagon stuck on this other wagon. So I restarted the game while I got my insurance papers out naturally. Finally, I went into the village again and it was at this point that this happened. Yeah, the wagon hit that sandbag, did a flip, then hit that wooden cart, did another flip, and from that moment I discovered it could no longer go forwards. It could only go backwards very slowly. So then I'm trying to navigate in reverse, trying to maybe make my way to the objective where it will automatically take me out of the wagon. This woman nearly gets in the way. Jeez, move, will ya? And then it just stops and pretty much won't move at all if I recall correctly. Consequently, at this point, I stop the game, pass my driver's test, restart the game, and eventually get onto my playthrough where I finally get back to where I was. Okay, so tripod's about at this point, so I just wander around, not knowing what I'm meant to be doing, when suddenly, I don't know if it's because I went to this location at the end of the town, or maybe a certain amount of time has passed or something, I don't think that's the case, because pretty sure I spent way longer time wandering around at this point on other playthroughs, but either way, I'm on to basically level 2, chapter 2, Machines from Another World, where it basically tells me this is like where the proper gameplay starts. From now on, you are free to roam. Remember to eat and drink, otherwise you will die a very horrible and bloody death. Survive to the end, watch out for the Martians. Which brings us to probably the most prominent attraction of this game, the inclusion of an adapted version of the album Kahaya Tripods. Now, Stefano Cagnani had previously made the War of the Worlds 1913 game that I also did a video on a long time ago now, over three years ago, which also included an adaptation of the Kahaya designs. Interestingly, in this game, he doesn't just reuse those same models. The ones in Survival are yet another adaptation that's completely different and one of the most unique versions of the Kahaya fighting machine that I've seen. Which is saying something, because this is a design that has been replicated so many times. Unfortunately, I didn't really get that much clear footage of them as it turns out, but they seem to be more like a mix of the Kahaya depiction and the Martians from the 1953 film, which is a really inspired take on the design in my opinion. They're really incredibly distinct and quite unique. And this really sums up something that's quite nice about this game. What Kanyani has produced here feels like it's intended to be a tribute to nearly every iconic version of The War of the Worlds. There's so many elements mixed together from so many different portrayals. Now, as for Watch Out for the Martians, I'm not so sure that's the case, to be honest. The environment in the game is so open and spacious, which is really nice. It truly feels like a massive game. Yet, this results in the Martians not really being a threat, at least in my experience. I only ever died to them once, and that was when I was purposefully getting close to one to get a closer look for the footage, and even then, it wasn't even the Martian that killed me directly. It was instead because its heat ray left a luminous path that I stepped in, not realising that it kills you. By that point, the tripod was well on its way away from me. So yeah, it's a great design, but in general, it felt like it was incredibly easy to avoid the tripods, and they only really seemed to play in the game in the factor of seeming really creepy, just seeing them and their lights in the distance, destroying everything everywhere they go. In fact, actually, I really want to give credit to the animation of the light of the tripods, because a really good job was done of animating this kind of really subtle twitching movement of the light searching, you know, as if it was genuinely its eyes, or eye, looking around. I thought it was done very well. 
And at this point, I'd also just like to take a moment to give credit to the look of the game in general. I think the style of it is done really nicely in portraying a Victorian village and fields and area. I just really like the look of it, the muted colours and whatnot. I think he's done quite a good job of just like building up this small village in the middle of fields, you know, I think it works quite well. Now, I really love this concept of having to survive in this open world and whatever. As it said, survive to the end. So at this point, I'm assuming I just have to survive until a certain amount of time has passed. But there's no indicator of that as far as I can tell, which does make you feel on the initial playthrough like, is this just gonna go on till you die or what? You kind of feel a bit lost. About nine and a half minutes of wandering around, however, the game unexpectedly faded to black again and faded back out and I'm suddenly on chapter three, the red weed. And also now next to the sea. Meanwhile, an excerpt by Richard Burton about the chapter's titular subject from Jeff Wayne's musical version plays. And I really loved this area, being able to look out at the boats and whatever. I thought this was a really nicely designed location. It had a certain feeling to it, you know, with the sky being all red. It just felt very ominous. I don't know how to explain it. It's very nicely done. But then, once again, you're just left to wander about with no indication of what to do or where to go. Then I see a woman, so apparently I naturally start following her. Oh, sorry for startling you, love. And then I set off into the red fields, and yeah, these red fields go on for a very long time. Literally, the place with the boats earlier was essentially the last trace of civilization or anything that I encountered, aside from seeing the lights of tripods in the far distance. And I genuinely wandered through these fields, finding nothing for six minutes, until I desperately was running out of food, trying to find some food to eat, but there was nothing but red fields. So I died yet again by starvation. Then the game did this. So yeah, turns out no matter how far you get, if you die, you have to start right from the beginning and go through all that build up again. Just because you died, which is likely to happen, it's a survival game. So with this in mind, it kind of makes the game somewhat tedious, arguably. Which is the main reason that that was as far as I ever got, and I never actually finished the game. However, while writing this review, I realised something. Now, since playing this game, I myself made a game in Unreal Engine 4, which I believe is the same engine this was done on. And let me tell you, making a save system in UE4 is ridiculously difficult, or at least it was to me who hadn't made a game on it before. I don't know if this is specific to Unreal Engine, but I know definitely with Unreal Engine, it's so hard to implement a save system. Genuinely, this was the hardest part of making the game. The reason I haven't attempted to make a game since is because I can't be bothered to go through all that again. It was so difficult, I remember genuinely considering releasing the game without a save system, just being like, okay, I'll put like a level select section in the main menu or something, people can just do whatever level they want, forget the save system, just like it was so difficult. But eventually I did manage to get a working save system into my game, that's pretty much works exactly how I'd wanted it. But having now had that experience, I don't know, but my theory is that that's what happened here. I think Stefano Cagnani usually makes quite short experiences, that's what his last War of the Worlds game was, and a part of me wonders if that's because the save system is such a difficult thing to implement in Unreal Engine. It makes complete sense to me, and I completely sympathise with it, because genuinely, it's so difficult to do that. So this is probably the greatest flaw of this game. But I do want to give credit to Kanyani though, because I remember seeing the page for this game on itch.io and seeing people commenting on it and criticizing it. And I remember him being very humble about it and genuinely, from what I could make out, taking on the criticism. So at least there's that. Yeah, and I guess that's it really. This feels like a sudden place to leave it off. Nearly as sudden as dying from starvation. But yeah, this game is pretty interesting. It has quite big flaws when it comes to the gameplay. But you know, it's definitely an interesting adaptation with an inspired design to it, I'd say. Either way, it's really nice to see people so dedicated to the War of the Worlds to create fan games about it, which is not an easy thing to do. And it's nice to see yet another version with The War of the Worlds survival.